Okay, in this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a go at trying to create um, a volcano, or a rather simple volcano using Tinkercad. Now, before I start, I'm in France, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to look at Mount Longuenot and Kenya to see if we can see what a volcano looks like. So I'm going to zoom in, close this picture. Okay. Wait while it zooms in on Kenya. Wait while it zooms in on the volcano. So you can see what we want. We want a kind of a cone with either a flat top or some sort of indent. And if we zoom out on Mount Longinot, what we should see is, let me just get far enough out. Okay, there we go. So we should be able to see Lake Naivasha as well. So we could take in the whole of this in Hell's Gate National Park, um, but it's gonna be quite a simple one. So basically what I'm really after in this one is seeing some sort of volcano with some flat around, ground around it. Um, we could try and put some extra bits in, or we could choose a different volcano and make this look different. So I'm gonna go onto tinkercad.com and I'm gonna go create new design. Wait for it to load up. Now, this is gonna be a scene that I'm gonna use for a few different things. So the first thing I'm gonna do here is make like a baseboard for this. So I'm gonna make this quite big. I'm gonna fill up most of my available space here, but I'm not gonna make it very thick, okay? So I can build things on it later. Push that out of that way a bit. Now, because of what I want to do is I want to make a volcano, I'm going to start with the cone tool. So I'm going to use the cone, I'm going to put it on the base. I'm going to put it on one side because it allows me to build other things around it later. I'm going to pull from the corner, which should more or less preserve its size. Okay, I'm going to pull the top up so it grows up a bit. Okay, now one of the things you can do with the um, cone is you can change the base radius, which is this bit, but you can also change the top radius, which is this one. So we can kind of get a flatter top, although in that case, it's probably too flat. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna build it a bit like this, okay? So we've got a flat top. Now we could then put another cone on top of it if we wanted, okay? And we could expand that cone out so that it becomes a bit wider. I could bring it up a bit so it starts at the base. Okay, play around a bit with the edges here to put it where we want. The nice thing with this is we don't end up with a perfectly um, regular set of edges. You know, we can now end up with a few stops. We can end up with it going shallower and then steeper. And again, on the top radius, if we kind of bring that in a bit, okay, then we can make our volcano have a flat top. Now, to be fair to Longinot, Longinot looks a bit more like the actual base section there. So what we may need to do is bring this top bit down a bit so it's not quite as tall as this. And we may need to bring this top radius out a bit so it's a bit steeper, but not quite so tall, okay? If you chose a different volcano, you might wanna make the whole thing bigger. And we could select this whole area and make the little thing larger together. Now, I want to indent it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use another cone but this time what I'm gonna do with the cone, if I just turn myself sideways so I can see it a bit more clearly, okay, is I'm gonna flip my cone upside down so it's like that 180 degrees. What I can now do with the cone, and again, if I just reposition myself a bit so I can see this above, I can now move this cone so it's on top of the volcano and bring it up a little bit like that. If I change the color of it just to make it a bit more visible for a second, Okay, we should now be able to stretch this cone out so it kind of fills the side. Be good if it wasn't completely regular because volcanoes generally aren't. So I'm gonna stick it out to the side, that side a little bit more. Okay, maybe a little bit more than that. Okay, I'm gonna bring it down so it kind of sticks in. So it will kind of hollow out this, but it will also eat away at the edge of that one. I'm gonna make it into a hole and then these ones I want grouped together. So I'm gonna select that. So the whole of this volcano area is grouped and I'm gonna group it. Okay, what should happen now is you should see as I turn it around that the 
way I've done it, I've kind of eroded one side of the volcano, okay? I've probably gone a bit low there really because I've kind of gone out of the bottom of the volcano, so we could go back and adjust that. Because I didn't group the red section with it, it should now be possible to turn that volcano around without turning the base if we want, so we could have kind of the slightly more eroded side facing one side. Okay, and we could repeat it. We could do another cone or another object in so this becomes more eroded if we wanted to add things like lava or pyroclastic flow. The nice thing with this being printed in plastic as well is if we made this narrow, we could actually make this into a working uh, volcano. Um, I'm not sure what effect we'd have on the plastic in the long run, but certainly a couple of times we should be able to use the sodium bicarbonate idea to make it an actual working volcano. Now, we've got longer knot now appearing in the side so we click back here, okay, we've got that. What else we've got down here, this is kind of like the flower farms around here that happen before you get onto the lake. So we could have a go at trying to add in um, something like the lake. So we, we could go on to a different object. Which one should I use for this one? Okay, we could maybe use something like the cylinder option put the cylinder in here, the lake's not perfectly spherical or even circular, but there is a part of the lake, I'm not sure if it shows very well on the image here, around Crescent Island here, where you've got um, a kind of indented circle section. Okay, so you do kind of get this bowl effect here, so we could kind of just use that one. So we'll use that one here, Again, I'm going to push this down a bit. We don't want this to push too far because this is already quite a narrow base. So let's bring this up so it's kind of pushing in a little bit. Let's make that into a hole. This one we want to connect to the main base. We're going to do like that. And we're going to connect those two together. We should see that that changes to red and we get kind of like a small indentation. And we could do more if we don't want it to be quite so regular. Okay, so we're starting to get a bit of a scene here. Um, for our volcano and for our area. And what we can next do is you can start to add some extra objects into that. So alongside the volcano, we could go and have, try and creating some things like some trees. So it could be down around the lake, we want some trees. We could put a cylinder in. Cylinder's far too big, clearly. So let's shrink that right down. Okay, let's see if I've managed to do that without making it weirdly elongated, which is what I normally manage to do. So I'll zoom in a bit. Okay, so that's now a two by three. So we can make that a two by two. Yeah, okay. And we can make that, yeah, browns would be okay for a base of a tree. We could use the cone, that would make an okay tree. It's not really a very African tree, but it'll work okay for, for a tree. We could zoom that around. We can make this one green. Again, this is mostly just for effect on Tinkercad because if you 3D print this, this is not going to work like this. And one of the issues here, I'll come back to this in a second, okay, would be I wouldn't want to 3D print this like this. So what I would want to do now is I would want to stop because at this point, when I try to 3D print this, this is going to start to put all the supports in. So what I could do though is I could resize my top of the tree so I want the way I want it. I'll make it like that, okay. If I wanted it to have multiple ones of these, I'm gonna make kind of a Christmas tree one, which is again a bit weird considering where I've put it, but we'll go with it. Okay, I can bring that up so we can get this multiple effects. Control C, Control V. Just raise this up a little bit, okay. So we're gonna get this multiple layer tray, but. I don't want to print this on here. What I want to do, you can see I haven't even got it center either. I want to select those ones. Let's move around so I'm not catching anything else. Select those bits there. That's still selecting the tree. So we just want just the top bit there. Okay. And I want to group those bits, but I don't want to print them on there. What I want to do instead is I want to move these to the edge of the board. Okay, so this might be a point to which we just have to reposition this a bit so we can have some things on the side. And the reason I want to do that is because otherwise, when I print this, this is going to look really weird. 
gonna look particularly weird if I leave that flying as well. So let's bring this back down to the base. Okay. So it's now on the base again. And let's move that one back in. Let's add some more trees here and then I'll explain why this doesn't work. Control C, Control V. Okay, let's just put a few of these around. Control V. Okay, Control V. Okay, Control V. Okay, so these can attach fine to the board. This can't, okay. Control C, Control V. So we've got one, two, three, four, five trees. Let's make five tops for our trees. See, occasionally I'm catching on the edge rather than pulling it, which is why I have to keep on doing it. Okay, that's just me being a bit of a klutz. Okay, so what we could do is we could print these separately, and then we could either indent a hole so they just slot in, or we could just glue them on the top. So, I mean, if we look at that being a two by two, okay, if we go onto the bottom of our trees here, and ideally I probably should have done this before I duplicated it, and we go into a cylinder, and we make a new cylinder, and again, I want this to be a two by two, or possibly a three by three, but because two by two is going to be pretty close. Anyway, let's try that. Okay, so we should now have this really small cone section, and then what we can do here, and if I zoom in on this, we should be able to see this. Okay, we should have to put this here, so control Z, pull this down because we do not want this to be sticking at the top of our tree. Just want it to be in the center of the tree. So get that in the center of the tree like that. Okay, control C, control V, and we're going to move the next one across to the, to the next tree like that. Okay, control C, control V. Do the same thing again. I'm going to move this across to the next tree like that one. Okay. Some of these are more central than others. <laughs> control C, Control V. Okay. Come back to that in a second. You can change if you use like your right hand mouse, your middle mouse, the position of it. Okay, so if we highlight those two, we can group these. You can ungroup them because some of it's already selected, but we can actually align. So I'm going to click on align that one because I want that middle bit to be in line. So I want it to align with that one and with that one. Okay, so I'm going to do the same with this. Okay, I'm going to click on the align tool. I want it to align with here and here. Okay, align this one. And again, I want it to align with this and with. Let's try that again. And with that and with that. Okay, and then we do the same with this one. And again, we're going to align that one with the two sides, so it's pretty central. Do the same with this one. Okay, we're going to align this one with this one and with this one. Okay, I'm just going to check that I'm not doing anything weird. So you can see on this one, this is um, clearly too tall. So we're going to pull that down. I'm going to pull this one down. I'm going to pull this one down. Okay, and then we can go back over here. So what we can do now with each of these, we can just group them. And that should make now a nice hole in each of them that will now allow us to put that tree base in when we print them. Now, obviously, we can add a lot more trees. We can add other bits of background on here. But the core part I was trying to show here was how we did the trees and how we did the volcano. So at this point, as long as these look okay, they seem to. Okay, and we can see them there. I'll just move this across. Okay, uh, at this point we're going to look at how this prints. Just to show how one of them shouldn't work, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put one of these, um, control C, control V, um, on top of one of these already. Okay, and you'll see why this isn't a good idea. Okay. Just turn this around so you can see this a bit more clearly. You can move this on so it's pretty much onto there. And I'm going to bring this up. 
Okay. Maybe a bit taller. <laughs> okay. So that's sitting on top of the base here. As I said, that isn't good. So we're going to go back to the Tinkercad section. Mostly just to make sure it saves. I'm going to rename this one using properties. So I'm going to call this one uh, Again, okay, I'm going to call this one Volcano. I'm going to click on here and I'm going to download this one. I'm going to download it as an STL file again. So, wait for the STL file to show up here. Then, I'm going to go into my flash print software, which is my slicing software. See what it looks like there by the way and you can see obviously it would be nice to add some extra bits in but they don't necessarily have to be printed on this okay maximize that so you can see it i'm going to load my model in so i'm going to load in my volcano model it's off the platform so i'm going to press ok it's too big so i'm going to press on scale and we're going to put it to maximum and then we're going to drop it down a bit so it's not filling right to the very edge Okay, now you can see at the moment this all looks fine. Okay, everything's adhered to the base. Okay, if you zoom in, you can see the trees look okay. As I say, they're not really acacia trees, but they kind of look like trees, which I guess is in itself okay. But this is where we have a problem because if I now go to supports and I press on auto supports, you'll see it's trying to support the sections of the tree, which it will need to do. We can deal with this in a minute about how we do this. But it's also trying to support this tree, and these supports are going from one part of the model to another, which means that we're going to have to break these off, and it doesn't need to be there. It would be much better to do these separately and then be able to stick them on. And if I just clear these supports for a second, we can make it slightly better because we can make these um, a lot thinner, become a little bit less strong, but there's nothing heavy on this. Okay, and we put auto supports in again is a bit better but these are still going to probably damage this part of the model when we try to remove them whereas on all of these ones there's no none of these so therefore if we print it this way if we ignore that for a second these ones have possibly got a few too many supports and what you can do is you can go through and you can just remove one or two that you don't need. So let's say we decide we don't want that one. We click on it. We should just be able to take that one out. Just press and delete. Delete that one. Okay, or we might decide there's a couple of extra ones. But the big thing here is it doesn't actually matter if this doesn't work properly because we can reprint these sections again and stick them back on top of the posts. Whereas this is the main part of the model, and these supports are likely to ruin it, so we don't get a nice smooth surface, okay? I mean, it could be, for instance, on this one that we decide we don't want that support, uh, we don't want that support, so we're still getting some support for this other bit, okay? Um, but this bit's about much more flexibility, whereas this one is just going to damage the model we've got, which is why when I was saying to make the, um, tops of the trees not to stick them onto the posts just to make the indentation so that we can let's just show you this here okay so we can add them in i mean one of the other things we should be doing here is removing the support that is put right up the middle the flash forge software isn't bad but it does do some random things here okay it tends to put too many supports in and it also tries to support things that deliberately not supported like the hole in the middle of an object okay but this is how it will print out this is the start of our volcano scene and we can now print other objects that need to go onto this which don't have to be printed as part of the base and can be added later on okay thank you